hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel from this video i am going to discuss about the anatomy of pancreas so you will learn about the parts of the pancreas uh, the surface marking and the uh, relations of the various parts of the pancreas and about the pancreatic ducts and uh, arterial supply venous drainage as well as the lymphatic drainage so I will uh, first discuss about the general features of the pancreas. Here you can see this is the pancreas. This part is the pancreas. When we talk about the pancreas, it is about 12 to 15 centimeters long and extend from the duodenum to the spleen. It consists of a head and then a neck, a body and a tail. Uh, the pancreas is retroperitoneal organ except uh, for its tail which lies in the lenorenal ligament. A uh, whole pancreas except the tail of the pancreas is retroperitoneal. The head lies opposite the two first two lumbar vertebrae. Head lies opposite to the first two lumbar vertebrae. The body lies more or less transpyloric plane and the tail is at the level of T12 vertebrae. Head is at the level of, um, head is opposite to the first two lumbar vertebrae that means L1 and L2. Then body lies more or less uh, in transpyloric plane and Tail is at the level of T12. Then I will talk about uh, the surface marking of the pancreas. Uh, the surface marking of the duodenum marks the head of the pancreas because uh, the pancreatic head lies in the uh, curve of the inner or the inner curvature of the duodenum. Uh, for the body of the pancreas, two lines approximately. Uh, 2.5 to 3 centimeters apart are drawn from the head towards the uh, left for a distance of about 10 centimeters on transpyloric plane but with an upward slant. The two lines meet uh, at the left end above the transpyloric plane and their meeting point represents the tail. Then we will discuss about uh, the relations of the uh, pancreas head of the pancreas lies in a c-shaped concavity as you can see in this picture c-shaped concavity of the duodenum a blunt uncinate process arises from the lower part of the head this is the uncinate process it arises from the lower part of the head and turns to left behind the superior mesenteric vessels anteriorly head is related uh, from above downward first part of the duodenum then uh, the transverse colon here uh, you can see the cut section of transverse colon uh, then uh, coils, coils of the jejunum then posteriorly uh, it is uh, related to the common bile duct posteriorly pancreatic head is related to common bile duct uh, the other posterior relations are you can see the inferior vena cava is there and the termination of right and left renal veins. Above and below, above, below and to the right, the head is in close relation to the uh, duodenum. The pancreatic or duodenal artery, arterial arcades lie in the groove between duodenum and the head of the pancreas here. The uncinate process, this part is related anteriorly to superior mesenteric vessels, you can see, and posteriorly to abdominal aorta. Uh, then, uh, this vascular relationship is described as vascular nutcracker formed by the abdominal aorta and um, its uh, superior mesenteric branch. Then, the relations of the neck area anterior it is related to the upper part of the gastroduodenal artery uh, upper part of the gastroduodenal artery and uh, to the pylorus of the stomach from which is separated by lesser sac uh, posteriorly it is in relation to the portal vein posteriorly it is related to the portal vein here which is formed behind the neck 
it is formed behind the neck by union of splenic vein and superior mesenteric vein. Uh, the body is uh, triangular uh, with three borders and three surfaces. The anterior surface lies between anterior and uh, the superior borders. The uh, inferior surface lies between anterior and inferior borders. The posterior surface is between superior and inferior borders. Mm. Then uh, the relations of borders. That means uh, the anterior border gives attachment to transverse mesocolon. Let me show you a picture. Here you can see the attachment of transverse mesocolon to the anterior border of the pancreas. In fact, uh, the embryological stage, this border gives attachment to two posterior layers of the greater omentum and uh, two layers of the transverse mesocolon. The right end of the superior border, right end of the superior border means this area which is in contact with the lesser omentum and it is called as tuber omentale. Inferior border is in relation to the superior mesenteric vessels as they emerge from the head to cross the uncinate process. Uh, the anterior surface is actually uh, related to the uh, part of stomach bed. In this picture you can see uh, the part of the stomach, stomach also. So uh, the pancreas lies uh, behind the stomach as you can see here. Um, so uh, actually the anterior surface of the pancreas is um, part of stomach bed. It is separated from posterior surface of the stomach by lesser sac. There is lesser sac in between the stomach and the pancreas. Inferior surface is in contact with duodeno jejunal flexure, coils of the jejunum and left colic flexure. Posterior surface is related from right to left to the uh, abdominal aorta here. Then uh, the origin of superior mesenteric vessels. Then uh, left crust of the diaphragm here. Mm, then uh, suprarenal uh, vessels. The suprarenal vessels and uh, left kidney. Here you can see the left kidney posterior to the pancreas and then the spleen. When we talk about the tail of the pancreas, uh, the tail is uh, the tapering uh, left end of the pancreas and it reaches the hy hilum of the spleen through the lenorenal ligament along splenic vessels. Therefore, uh, the tail of the pancreas is part of the splenic pedicle as well. The islet cells are usually numerous in the tail of the pancreas during splenectomy. The tail of the pancreas is also likely to be injured unless identified and excluded from the ligature for splenic vessels. Failure to do so may cause the diabetes mellitus due to insufficiency of insulin because I told you earlier as well, the islets of Langerhans are numerous in the tail of the pancreas. Additionally, the injured tail may leak out uh, pancreatic enzymes causing destruction uh, of the surrounding tissues. And which leads to uh, chemical peritonitis and uh, pancreatic fistula. When we talk about the pancreatic ducts, uh, this is the bile duct and uh, you can see the main pancreatic duct here. This part is the accessory pancreatic duct. Here you can uh, see main pancreatic duct starting from the tail of the pancreas and it uh, comes as here and the uh, main pancreatic duct joins with the bile duct, common bile duct and opens into the major duodenal papilla and you can see accessory pancreatic duct opens into minor duodenal papilla. Main pancreatic duct or we call it as duct of Versang runs in entire length of the gland and uh, you can see it begins in the tail and gradually increase in size as it gathers more and more tributaries which are arranged in um, herringbone pattern. In the body of the pancreas, the duct lies nearer to the posterior surface. In the body of the pancreas, duct lies nearer to the posterior surface at the junction of 
head and neck, the duct turns sharply to inferior direction as you can see here. And then go to the right to enter into second part of the duodenum. Uh, it usually joins the common bile duct uh, just outside or inside the duodenal wall. The ducts unite to form hepatopancreatic ampulla just before the opening of major duodenal papilla. The hepatopancreatic sphincter surrounds the ampulla. Here is the ampulla. Pancreatic and biliary ducts surrounded by sphincters, sphincter pancreaticus and sphincter uh, cholidocus respectively near their site of fusion. Therefore, the sphincter of OD uh, consists of three parts. This is the accessory pancreatic duct or the duct of uh, San, San uh, Torini starts from the lower part of the head and then it travels up crossing in front of the main duct. You can see it crossing in front of the main duct and it opens in the second part of the duodenum at the summit of minor duodenal papilla. Two uh, centimeters proximal to the major duodenal papilla. It communicates with the main duct while crossing it. This is the arrangement of uh, pancreatic ducts. Next, we will uh, discuss about the arterial supply. Actually, the pancreatic head is supplied by anastomotic arcades between superior pancreaticoduodenal artery and uh, the inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery. Here is the inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery and here is the superior pancreaticoduodenal artery. So, there is, uh, the, uh, there is an anastomosis between here then uh, the neck area body and tail are supplied by splenic artery uh, then the venous drainage the veins from the pancreas drains into the splenic uh, superior mesenteric and portal veins uh, then the uh, lymphatic drainage uh, head and uh, body drain into pyloric and pancreatic uh, splenic nodes Actually, then they drain into para-aortic nodes. Then the uh, nerve supply of the pancreas. Uh, celiac plexus supplies both uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, nerves to the pancreas. And then visceral afferent fibers travel in greater and lesser splenic nerves. Then uh, segmental level of innervation is T7 uh, to T11. And uh, therefore, the pancreatic pain typically radiates into the middle of the back. And uh, due to its uh, radiation uh, or to the uh, parietal peritoneum covering the pancreas. Inflammation of the pancreas we call as pancreatitis. It may occur as a complication of uh, mums sometimes. Uh, there may be symptoms of uh, loss of appetite, uh, then nausea, typical pancreatic backache and fever. These are usually accompanied by bulky and fat-filled stools. Uh, in acute pancreatitis, it is characterized by rise in uh, serum amylase level four times than its normal value. Uh, when there is recurrent pancreatitis, uh, may, may can be due to any cause. It predisposes to stasis of pancreatic juice in the ducts leading to calculi formation in the pancreas as well. So, uh, that's all about uh, pancreas. I uh, hope you guys could understand uh, the anatomy of pancreas well. Thank you for watching.